I gathered all the most popular wired doorbells on the market, and today on The Hookup, we're gonna take an in-depth look at seven of them that are capable of more advanced configurations. That means that we're gonna look at things like fully local storage and control, RTSP and OnVIF compatibility, smart home platform integration, and advanced setup. If those things don't sound important to you, I will be making a second video in the next couple weeks with all the doorbells, including their standard cloud configurations. But today, stick around for an unsponsored, unbiased deep dive for privacy-focused security camera and smart home enthusiasts. This video was sponsored by Locket Home Insurance. Stick around at the end of the video to hear more about them. For me, the holy grail of doorbells would be fully local with good image quality, available RTSP video streams, functional two-way talk, and integrations into Home Assistant. And out of these 14 wire doorbells, I've been able to narrow it down to these seven that offer more advanced options and local control. Going from least expensive to most, we've got the brand new five megapixel Reolink PoE doorbell for $89. Next is the three megapixel $95 Hike Vision DSHD1. After that is the Wi-Fi version of the five megapixel Reolink doorbell for $99. Then we've got the very popular $150 Amcrest 8410. Then we've got the $150 two megapixel Dawa VTO 2311R then the $199 Unify G4 doorbell, and then finally the most expensive local control option is the $299 Unify G4 Pro doorbell. We've gotten used to calling these things video doorbells, but they're actually a combination of three separate things. A doorbell, a security camera, and an intercom. So the way I'm gonna break down this video is looking at how well they perform each of those tasks while maintaining secure, private, local control. Starting with the most obvious, these things should be effective doorbells, and doorbells are often exposed to the elements, so water ingress protection ratings are important. The unified doorbells are IP64 rating, meaning they can withstand splashes of water, while the rest of the doorbells are IP65 rated, meaning they can withstand a constant jet of water from any direction. I've also heard reports of some doorbells failing in direct sunlight due to overheating, and I was surprised by how hot the Hike Vision DSHD1 doorbell got without any direct sunlight, which was enough to melt the adhesive off of the Velcro pads that I was using for mounting. But I didn't have any heat issues with any of the other doorbells. As for their size, the Unify G4 Pro and Dawa VTO are by far the largest at approximately five by 16 by three centimeters, while the rest of the doorbells are more or less the same size at approximately four and a half by 13 by two centimeters. Since these doorbells are obviously also cameras, you gotta be able to aim them, and the best way to do that is with angle mounting brackets. The Hike Vision DSHD1 and Amcrest 8410 include both a horizontal angle mount and a vertical angle mount, while the Reolink and Unify doorbells only include a horizontal angle mount, and the Dawa VTO didn't come with any additional mounting brackets. These are not battery doorbells, and to power them, you've got two options. The Reolink Wi-Fi, Amcrest, Hike Vision, and Unify G4 doorbells utilize your existing doorbell wiring for power and Wi-Fi for data, while the Dawa VTO and Reolink PoE use power over Ethernet for both power and data. The Unify G4 Pro doorbell by default uses your existing doorbell wiring for power and Wi-Fi for data, but there is a power over Ethernet adapter planned that is currently in early access. Now, I'm not allowed to show early access products or specifically talk about them, but I just wanted to show that the USB-C port on the G4 Pro doorbell is not recessed. So if you want to use that plug like with a PoE adapter, it would require a fairly large hole drilled in your wall, unlike the flush mounted solutions from Reolink and Dawa. When someone presses the doorbell, the most traditional way for you to be alerted would be to use an existing doorbell doorbell chime, and the Amcrest 8410, Hike Vision DSHD1, and Unify doorbells can all do exactly that, while the two PoE doorbells from Reolink and Dawa cannot. The only Wi-Fi doorbell that isn't able to activate your existing chime is the Reolink doorbell, and that's probably why the Reolink doorbells are also the only ones that come with an external wireless chime. Add-on chimes are available for the Amcrest 8410 and Unify doorbells, but only as a separate purchase, and even priced around $50, they both seem to be low stock and pretty hard to come by. The higher tech way to be alerted to a doorbell press is on your phone, which is where this video starts to get a little bit more complicated. Of course, all the doorbells can alert you via a notification on your phone if you're using their default apps and connecting them to the manufacturer's cloud. But if you're trying to follow cybersecurity best practices and block your security cameras from the internet, then those notifications are gonna stop working. And to be able to effectively use them locally, we need some other way to detect those doorbell presses. In the case of the Amcrest 8410, the Home Assistant Dawa integration does a great job of passing in motion events and doorbell presses where they can be used to send notifications without giving your doorbell access to the internet. Unfortunately, while that same integration can be used to import the Dawa VTO, none of the motion or button press events work. I also tried using the Dawa VTO to MQTT custom add-on, and I tried setting up a SIP server using asterisks to get button presses into Home Assistant, but nothing worked. I literally spent an entire workday trying to make the Dawa VTO work with Home Assistant, but I ultimately failed. 
I'm not saying it's not possible, it's just not straightforward and it's not something that I could do in a time efficient manner. Thankfully, the other doorbells weren't so difficult and the Unified Protect integration did a great job passing motion and doorbell press events into Home Assistant to use your own notifications. But it of course requires you to have some sort of Unified Protect server on your network, like a Dream Machine Pro, Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus, or UNVR. The Reolink integration doesn't currently work to detect doorbell button presses, but I'm not super worried about it yet because I imagine that functionality is gonna come pretty quickly once the doorbell is widely released. The motion and person detection sensors from the doorbell do work in Home Assistant, so once the Reolink doorbell gets into the hands of the integration author, I'm hoping it's going to be trivial for him to add a new visitor sensor to the Reolink API library. As for the hike vision, there's no easy way to capture button presses. There's literally 300 pages of forum posts talking about ways to flash different firmware, modify internal circuitry, and write custom firewall alerts in PFSense to capture the AWS web request for the button press, but the cliff notes of those 300 pages is that none of the options are easy, completely reliable, or work with every feature. The second obvious question about these video doorbells is how effective they are as security cameras, and that topic is also a little more complex than it seems on the surface, because not everybody is going to be using these video doorbells in the same way. In the surveillance world, the way that we describe the purpose of a security camera is with the abbreviation DORI, which stands for Detection, Observation, Recognition, and Identification. Detection and observation zones are generally covered by wide angle cameras, while recognition and identification should be covered by more zoomed in, narrow field of view cameras. I think that it's relatively common for people to use a Ring, Eufy, or Nest doorbell as their only security camera, in which case focusing on detection and observation with a wide angle lens makes a lot of sense. But I think most people who are interested in this video will probably already have at least a couple other cameras and should focus more on recognition and identification around your front door entry point. So looking at field of view, the Unify G4 Pro has the widest horizontal field of view at 136 degrees, and thanks to an additional downward facing package camera, it also has over 180 degrees of vertical field of view. The G4 doorbell is similar to the main G4 Pro doorbell with 134 degrees of horizontal field of view, but only 108 degrees of vertical. The Hike Vision DS HD1 uses a portrait orientation and a fisheye lens to get 138 degrees of vertical field of view with a single camera at the expense of horizontal field of view, which I measured at just 108 degrees. The Reolink doorbells in Amcrest 8410 were about the same with around 98 degrees of vertical field of view and 125 degrees of horizontal field of view. And the Dawa VTO was by far the most zoomed in with just 60 degrees of vertical field of view and 102 degrees horizontal. So we would expect the Dawa VTO, Amcrest 8410, and Reolink doorbells to be the most useful for identification purposes, but let's see how that holds up to testing. During the daytime, the video quality from the Reolink doorbells was unmatched, and at 20 feet, the images could easily be used for identification. You'll notice the difference in perceived video quality between the Reolink Wi-Fi and PoE doorbells, which was just caused by differences in lighting conditions. However, even though the sign looks overexposed on the PoE image, I think the Reolink software actually did a pretty good job exposing my face properly, which is ultimately the most important part of the image. After the Reolink doorbells, the best performer was the Hike Vision DSHD1, which was a little blurry due to its low resolution, but could probably still be used for identification purposes. As with basically every Amcrest camera that I've ever tested, low bitrate seems to be their number one enemy, and my face got totally lost in encoding artifacts. And unfortunately, despite the Dawa VTO's low field of view, the two megapixel resolution resulted in a blurry image. The worst images at 20 feet though came from the Unify doorbells, which as I mentioned is largely due to their wide field of view lenses, but that's not the whole story. Even though both Unify doorbells advertise a five megapixel main image sensor, they actually output video at 1600 by 1200, which is only two megapixels, which when spread out over that 135 degrees of horizontal field of view, means that the number of pixels per degree of field of view is roughly half that of the Reolink, which is why when you're using the Dory model, the Unify doorbells could probably only be used for observation at 20 feet and definitely not for identification. As I approached the door, I took another still at five feet where the Reolink doorbells also perform the best. At five feet, the Amcrest 8410 could also be used for identification, but you can still see all the encoding artifacts in my shirt and some on my face. The Unified G4 and G4 Pro doorbells did significantly better at five feet than at 20 feet, and the Hike Vision image was a little worse than those due to its low resolution and high field of view, resulting in a blurry overall image. The Dawa VTO was by far the worst, which is definitely unacceptable given that it also has the lowest field of view by a pretty significant margin. I also tested the nighttime performance in both color mode and infrared mode, and at 20 feet the results were expectedly worse than during the day. But in night color mode, with my exterior lighting on, the Reolink doorbells did the best, followed by the Hike Vision, then the Dawa VTO, and last were the Amcrest and Unify doorbells, which really weren't great at 20 feet. However, the most surprising thing was how bad some of them were at just five feet. This is the equivalent of where someone would stand after they ring your doorbell and take a step back. 
I felt that the Amcrest was unacceptably bad, followed by the Dawa VTO and the Hike Vision doorbell. The Unify G4 and G4 Pro doorbells were fine and could easily be used to identify me, but again, the real Link doorbells were both significantly better than the rest. Switching the cameras to infrared night vision at 20 feet, the Amcrest had the worst image, followed by the Dawa VTO. Next were the G4 and G4 Pro doorbells, and then the Relink doorbells. And the surprising best performer was the Hike Vision DSHD1, despite its lower resolution and high field of view. But we shouldn't give it too much credit here because all the images were pretty bad. At 5 feet, the Dawa VTO had by far the worst image, followed by a very pixelated and overexposed Amcrest. The Unified G4 doorbell was underexposed and pixelated, while the Relink doorbells lacked contrast and were a little bit blurry. I think the G4 Pro doorbell outperformed the G4 doorbell just due to random variations in my positioning, but the Hike Vision doorbell was again the best, making it the champion for infrared performance. That said, in my situation, I think I vastly prefer having color night vision, and performance seemed to be better across the board, as long as you have ample outside and porch lighting. So if we just consider the daytime performance and nighttime color mode, the Relink doorbells were absolute light years ahead of the rest, and are the new standard that all video doorbells should be held to as far as video quality. In a normal video doorbell test, I might look at things like motion detection accuracy and recording speed, but that doesn't really matter as much for these doorbells because I'm going to be using my local NVR Blue Iris to do motion detection, computer vision, and recording on the local video streams. When it came to getting each doorbell into Blue Iris, I'd say none of them were perfect, but the Amcrest 80410 and Dawa VTO were definitely the easiest, with true OnVIF support for both full resolution mainstream and lower resolution substream. The Relink doorbells also support OnVIF, but Relink currently has a few different firmware variations, and this one doesn't support the fixed frame rate option, at least not yet. So to get your doorbells working flawlessly in Blue Iris, I would suggest setting them up using RTMP instead of OnVIF RTSP, which still has occasional dropouts. Setting up the Unify doorbells in Blue Iris was a little bit more complicated because they first need to be set up in Unify Protect, then under Advanced you need to toggle on the SRTSP stream, and then you need to copy and modify the resulting URL to use RTSP instead of SRTSP. The Hike Vision doorbell was the strangest to set up, but essentially there is a hard-coded password printed on the back of the doorbell, and unlike the rest of the doorbells, there's only a mainstream and no substream. Unfortunately, even though I always try to check the box to set up an RTSP back channel for two-way audio, none of the doorbells work in Blue Iris with their two-way audio, which is pretty disappointing. To use that two-way audio, you need to use their individual phone apps, and to do that securely, we're going to block the cameras from the internet using firewall rules, and then access the cameras locally via my home network. And since an intercom system is most useful when I'm not at the house, I'll use a VPN to connect back to my home network using a cellular connection, which basically means that my phone looks like it's on my home network even when I'm on a cellular connection. The Relink doorbells paired with the Relink app work flawlessly using local only connections just like they always do. And the same goes for the Dawa VTO using the Dawa DMSS app. The Unify doorbells are a little bit different because they have to be accessed via the Unify Protect app, and the only way to access your Unify Protect cameras on a cellular connection is with the Unify Cloud login, which I don't really love. The Amcrest 80410 usually works with the Amcrest Cloud app, but as the name suggests, the connection requires P2P and connection to the Amcrest Cloud, and I wasn't able to get the 80410 to connect to that app or the Amcrest View Pro app when the doorbell was blocked from the internet. Because Amcrest cameras are ultimately made by Dawa, I was able to use the Dawa DMSS app to directly connect to the Amcrest doorbell using its local IP, but even though two-way talk looked like it was working, it actually just froze the camera feed. And that, of course, wasn't great, but it still worked better than the Hike Vision DSHD1 that wasn't able to connect locally on any of the apps that I tried and seemed to only work using the Hike Vision Hike Connect app and only when the doorbell had full, unrestricted access to the internet, which for me isn't an option. The Dawa VTO's two-way talk was frankly incredible. The audio delay was only four frames, which is approximately one-tenth of a second, and the audio in both directions was crystal clear with plenty of volume. Testing for delay in two-way two audio. Two audio. Testing one, testing two, one, three. Testing, 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 one, testing, two, three. three. Testing, testing the delay testing for two-way two audio, two audio and testing and audio, audio quality. quality. Standing at approximately four feet, testing audio quality, testing audio quality. And this test was just through the Dawa DMSS app, but the VTO doorbell also supports SIP protocol, which lets it act like a voice over IP phone. Both of the Relink doorbells performed much more similarly to other doorbells that I've tested, with 30 frames of audio delay, which is about one second. So this is the Relink and the uh, doorbell. Testing audio quality. Testing, one, testing two, three. audio quality. Testing, testing one, two, three. Two, three. Testing one, two, three. Now we are testing in the opposite direction. Now we are testing in the opposite direction. Testing one, two, three. Testing, testing one, two, three. We've testing got, one, two, three. Um, We've got uh, definitely some yard work going on out here. Let's see how we can cut through that noise.
There was no appreciable difference between the PoE doorbell's wired connection and the Wi-Fi doorbell, and both of them had crystal clear audio in both directions, despite a fairly significant audio delay. The G4 Pro had 10 frames of audio delay, which corresponds to about one third of a second, and the audio was clear and loud. Testing audio quality, audio and, quality and delay, and delay on, on Unified G4 Pro, Pro doorbell. Testing, testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. One, two, three. This, this is, one, two, three. This is on Hope Wi-Fi. All right, now we are testing, right, now we are testing audio, audio quality audio and delay from delay outside on the Unified G4 door, G4 Pro doorbell. However, the G4 doorbell did significantly worse, with a few frames less delay, but absolutely terrible audio that was garbled on both sides of the camera. Testing, testing. Unified G4, G4 doorbell. doorbell. This is the, this is the test from test inside, from inside, to, inside outside. to outside. This is from four feet. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, three. testing, testing one, two, three. Testing. We're just using normal voices from four feet. And again, don't forget that these are not working over cellular because Unify still doesn't support local discovery of Unify Protect through a VPN. So after testing all their functions, which of these doorbells is the best for advanced users focused on security, privacy, and local control? Well, assuming that the Reolink doorbell home assistant integration gets updated to include doorbell presses, it seems like an obvious pick. It's not only the least expensive, but it also has the best video quality by a significant margin. It works in blue hours with both a mainstream and a substream. It's OnVIF compatible, and it can connect locally via the Reolink app, even using a VPN. I didn't see any difference in video quality or functionality between the PoE and Wi-Fi versions. So unless having a wired connection on your doorbell is extremely important to you, I'm not sure the PoE connection is worth the hassle of running an ethernet cable to your doorbell location. For as hyped as the Amcrest 8410 is, I was really unimpressed by the video quality, and even though the Home Assistant integration seems to work well, the inability to use two-way talk without allowing the camera to connect to the internet is a total deal breaker for me. The same goes for the Hikvision DSHD1, which has an interesting camera focused on vertical field of view, but with no web interface, no ability to change the camera's password, and no ability to connect to a phone app without the cloud, it isn't really an option for me. The Dawa VTO 2311 seemed like it might be a good pick for someone looking for a really advanced locally controlled system with two-way audio using SIP protocol, but the video quality is really bad. And I wouldn't recommend the VTO if camera performance is at all important to you. And that leaves the Unify doorbells. And not only do they have questionable video quality due to downsampling their five megapixel cameras into a two megapixel stream, but I'm just not sold on Unify Protect from a privacy and security standpoint, since I can't block my Dream Machine Pro from the internet without destroying my whole network, meaning I have no way to compartmentalize their cameras. Truthfully, I might have made this video a little bit too early since the first major shipment of Reolink doorbells isn't happening until December, but in my opinion, the Reolink doorbells have been well worth the wait. And if you're like me and you've been waiting on your Reolink doorbell since July, I think you're going to be really happy with its performance. And if you haven't already ordered yours, I've got links down in the description for the Reolink doorbells as well as all the other doorbells that were tested in this video. This video is sponsored by Locket, a new UK home insurance provider who helps you protect your home using smart technology and rewards you with perks and discounts when you do. Locket is a digital first company, meaning you can easily get a quote online by answering as few as six questions and the typical quote process takes less than 60 seconds. You can check and adjust your coverage right from the app, which is one of the reasons that they've earned 4.8 out of five stars over on Trustpilot. If you are a smart home enthusiast, you can also apply to the Locket Insider program where they send you equipment to test and use to protect your home. Devices include things like video doorbells, leak detectors, or smart water shutoff valves. This program aims to further validate the fact that smart devices do in fact make your home safer. And after being accepted to the program, all you need to do is install your smart tech and report any claims or instances where your smart home prevented damage. At the end of the program, you get a copy of the final study report, and of course you get to keep all that provided smart tech. Check out Locket using the link down in the description to see if it's the right fit for you. I'd also like to thank all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.